Hey guys, in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to create a dummy data set in Excel. Uh, in this case in particular, I'm going to create a quick products table that has all of our information on it, include product ID, product type, name, unit price, description, reorder level, uh, and reorder quantity. So this would be kind of a product database where we'd want to make sure that we had information uh, in regards to inventory. So I've shown over on the right here databaseanswers.org slash data models it's a great place to kind of go and figure out and uh, get some table ideas uh, for dummy data sets and I use it all the time so I'm just going to use this simple products table and I'll show you how I'm going to uh, create a quick data set so I'm just going to add the product ID um, I'm going to add product type code let's go product name Price. I'm actually going to use product description before unit price. I don't like the order. Description. All right, so I paused the video just so I could get you guys acquainted with um, basically not bore you with creating the data uh, columns here. So now that I've done that, though, what I'm going to do is get Control T and I'm going to create a table out of this information so just like that hit control T I made sure to select the top row as my headers and that's created my little data set you can play around with the styling on here um, depending on what you really like so if I wanted gray I can add gray or blue or whatever so I've added blue here always uh, I always take out the grid lines because I just don't like seeing them so and once those grid lines are out we're basically ready to create a quick data set in Excel. So the first thing that we can do is we want to have the product ID and we can make this very simple and saying, okay, we're going to just type in one. So we've got product number or product ID number one. And then from there, we can just kind of drag this down. I'm going to put a two in first so it knows my se sequence. So I'm going to select both those two columns. And then we're going to use the fill handle in the bottom right hand corner, as you can see here. And then we can just drag that down to as many records as we want. So if we wanted 50 records, I drag it down one more. So we got 50 records in our table. Product type code. So um, let's just say we had three different product type codes. What I typically do is over on the right hand side here, I'd have, uh, let's just say category one, category two, category three. Whether or not that's what they mean by product code, I'm taking it as a specific product category as a total. So we're going to have three different product codes or categories in this case so in order to get this information and only use these three different codes what we're going to do is we're going to use the index formula so over here i'm going to type in equals index and i'm going to head over to l2 and then i'm just going to select all of these and i'm going to go um, we're going to hit f4 just to make sure that this is frozen and this is absolutely necessary because otherwise as we move down um, and we drag this formula down what would happen is if this was not absolute it would also follow its way down that cell and we don't want that we want to make sure that we're continuing to look only at this specific three sets of or three pieces of data so now that I've hit comma um, we want to select a row number in between those three so I'm going to say account and this is what's going to get returned out of the three that we're indexing or the three that uh, are part of that array so I'm going to just use ran between and I'm going to say one and three. So that would say do a random selection between row one and three uh, from the array L2 to L4, which is over here. So now if I hit enter, perfect. Now you'll see that we've randomly selected a specific product category between each. This is typically going to split them up exactly about 50-50. So if I were to do a frequency distribution on this, you'd probably see it be pretty close between category one, category two, and category three between all of the 50 records. So it would be split up pretty evenly, like I said. Uh, product name, this is going to be an easy one for us. We're just going to type in PN1, so part number one. Let's just say our product name one. And you'll see that that's updating because as I'm doing this, it's still calculating random numbers uh, for me using that ran between selection on that index formula. Now, if I type this PN1 in, I should be able to just double click this all the way down. And you see now that we have part number one all the way through to part number 50. So product description, I like to do the same. We can just do product description uh, one again, and then we'll just do PD1 like that. Double click that all the way down. 
Perfect. So we have now our product description set up. Okay, when it comes to the price, uh, let's just say we want to do a unit price here. We can use the RAND function. So the RAND function uh, gives us a number between 0 and 1, or is equal to 0 and less than 1. So if we just type in RAND like that, and I close that bracket, and then I just do a multiplication on this by, let's just say, 55 or something like that, or even 100. This will give us a unit price that we can use. Perfect. So now I multiplied that by 100, and that's given me a specific RAND between uh, unit price that we can use for this data set. So now if I just change, now if I highlight column E, and then I go over to general, I hit currency up top there, that'll give us a nice clean data set for our unit price by changing the data type. Reorder level, uh, we could use something uh, similar to this, but we'll just use that ram between function again. If I, what I should do actually before we proceed, I'm going to select the entire data set over here on category one through three, and then I'll just right click, and then I'm going to use this values, and that pastes the actual values as a flat value as opposed to a formula so that this does not continue to change. So if I hit one, two, three, perfect. So now you see that that's taken care of. Let's just get rid of this information over on the right by hitting delete. Perfect. We're going to want to do the same thing with our unit price too. So I'm going to highlight that entire column. So all I did there was control shift down arrow from that top first cell. We're going to hit, let's do this again. I'm going to go control shift up in this case and then shift down one cell and I'm going to hit control C and then we're going to right click and we're going to say paste options in this case values. Perfect. So now we have that. So now we have a unit price for the product. Next thing we want to do is we need a reorder level. So the reorder level, uh, we can do a ran between function here. If we go ran between uh, a bottom number and a top number. So let's just say typically we're going to hold anywhere between 50 pieces and 1,000 pieces of any given product. And perfect. So now I've created this reorder level using. Uh, the brand between function in this case anywhere between 50 and 100 or a thousand excuse me and that <clears throat> excuse me automatically uh, displayed that information for us so now same thing again control shift down arrow from that top cell control C and then we'll head right back up to the top right click let's just flatten those values so that we have only data and information you'll see that the formula is now removed excellent next the reorder quantity uh, reorder quantity, I'd use the exact same type of thing. Um, we can just do a random sampling again here. Uh, we'll just use the ram between function as well again. Uh, and then we'll say 50 and in this case we'll say uh, 500 as opposed to that full uh, 1000 that we used in the last reorder level value. So actually, you know what, reorder quantity is going to be pretty typical so let's use an index function so let's just say uh, most of our products are ordered in either batches of 25 50 or 100 so reorder quantity is typically like that you wouldn't see uh, you know reorder quantities of 35 or something like that or 33 you'd see something more along the lines of even numbers like this uh, so let's go like this, we'll add 250 as well. So now I've got four different data points that I can use, and we're going to use that same index function again. So we're going to type in index, we're going to select the four cells that have the information in it. We're going to hit F4, of course, because we want to only reference those four cells if we change the location of the formula. And we use that absolute, of course. So now the row number, as I'd shown you before, we can go ran between and actually use that function again and go one and four. Perfect. So now I've got a ran between function between one and four. So it's saying pick the first between the first and the fourth records on a random basis within the framework of K2 through K5 because we've got four different cells there. I close that. And perfect. So now we've got this perfect sample of data where we have these uh, equally set up order quantities or lock quantities that we need to buy in. So if I hit Control C now, again, I hit Control uh, Control Shift down arrow from that top cell, and then we go to Paste Options, right click, and one two three, 
now I've flattened that information as well. So look at that. We've got this perfectly created data set now. If you want to add other details, in this case, I'm not going to add any information in there. But we've created this perfect data set now that we can create something very easy with. Uh, and let's see what we can do really quickly. I'll show you real quick what we could do with a pivot table now that we've got that. We've got a table name uh, in place here. We could change this table name just to product I product info or something like that. So I've typed in product info. We're going to create a table out of that. So we can just hit summarize with pivot table right from the table tools design. And we can just see how many items we have in each product category really quickly using this pivot table by dragging the product type code. In this case, I'm using that kind of as a category definition and then we can just drag product type code again right into the value section and it does a quick count and you'll see now that we've got 15 products in category one we've got 19 in category two and 16 in category three and then if you want to use this quick pivot table to give you an idea of what we have in uh, category two for products just double click on the 19 or the value and you'll see there we have exactly what is included in that data set. Part number 149 all the way through and you have part number 20 down at the bottom. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions about creating random data sets, uh, feel free to leave any comments below. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.